Democrats Kamala Harris, President Biden, John Kerry, and our current United States Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, have all used the phrase, Israel must be able to defend itself, as has other world leaders, such as Emmanuel Macron. That doesn't mean that they are happy with Israel's genocide of Palestinians, but I, like many of you, have wondered why states who call for peace talks, an end to fighting, and for a two-state solution are still arming Israel. Here's why. This isn't a justification, merely an explainer, because much of life is more than a mere soundbite. Here's what Israel must be able to defend itself really means. Welcome to our first episode of Uncoded. It's a central tenet of most democracies that states have a right to defend themselves. In a world that is more interconnected than ever before, and when a conflict arises anywhere on the globe, there is a danger that one or more superpowers will get involved. Superpowers don't want to go head to head in a war with each other, knowing the dangers of biological and nuclear annihilation. But states are willing to do things that don't necessarily go over that line, such as hacking and proxy wars. A proxy war is where one superpower supports a state with economic assistance as well as military aid and weapons. As long as one or more superpowers are aiding one side, they have an advantage over their enemy. According to an Associated Press article in January of 2024, weapons such as Iranian sniper rifles, Chinese and Russian AK-47s, and North Korean and Bulgarian-built rocket-propelled grenades have all been used by either Hamas or Hezbollah, the two main antagonists against Israel in the conflict. In comparison, according to a May 31, 2024 article by the Council on Foreign Relations, by that point, Israel has received about $310 billion, adjusted for inflation, since the founding of the State of Israel in 1948. Much of that is financial aid, so that Israel can buy U.S.-made weapons. The aid has only increased since the start of Israel's war with Hamas in 2023. The United States provides military support to Israel in its conflict with Hamas for several reasons. Firstly, Israel is a key strategic ally in the Middle East and the U.S. and Israel share a long-standing partnership based on mutual interests, including counterterrorism efforts, intelligence sharing, and regional stability. Additionally, the United States has made commitments to Israel's security through various agreements and military aid packages, which include providing advanced military technology, such as the Iron Dome missile defense system, to help protect against attacks from groups like Hamas. Moreover, the U.S. views Hamas as a terrorist organization, a designation shared by the European Union and other countries, and supports Israel's efforts to combat terrorism and maintain its security. These factors, combined with a shared commitment to democratic values, underpin the United States' decision to support Israel militarily in this conflict. Certainly, the United States and her citizens do not want harm to come to Israel one of its closest allies, and America and other powers are concerned about intervention by other powers, as well as a full-scale escalation. And a weak Israel only benefits its enemies. After all, a biological or nuclear strike would hurt both Israel and Gaza. But is raising the anti-sound policy? And what about the threats that the Palestinians face now, with over 40,000 killed since the beginning of the conflict? It is against the United States law, specifically the Leahy law, for the U.S. to provide security assistance to foreign governments or groups that commit gross human rights violations. That's one of the reasons that the Biden administration temporarily stopped shipping some arms to Israel back in 2023, but that was a temporary halt and not a signal of a change of policy towards Israel. Not only are such acts atrocious and an affront to our shared humanity, they once again bring America on the wrong side of history and threatens our own national security and our standing in the world. Further, according to law, the U.S. government is responsible to monitor the uses of the arsenal it provides. The U.S. has failed on both of these counts and are aiding and abetting the destruction of Palestinians in Gaza. Even more telling, on a stage of inclusion of nearly every group in America, including Republicans, no Palestinian Americans were given the mic to speak at the Democratic National Convention, nor were any given the stage at the Republican Convention for that matter. 
Uncoding the news helps us understand the context of what's going on in the world and makes us better citizens. My channel, known as the Renaissance Spirit, is dedicated to the pursuits of a just, equitable, and humanitarian world, and how and why we all need to be the solution to the issues facing us today. Video topics encompass areas including news, analysis, history, politics, religion, personal development, society, culture, social and environmental justice, and other topics of liberal arts and sciences, including ancient Rome and the Roman Empire, which is a great comparison and contrast of the modern world. Topics perfect for the true modern and egalitarian polymath. A person with an open mind and the thirst for truth in its many forms and disciplines. A journey through knowledge, reason, and time. The Renaissance ushered in a golden age and the pursuit of knowledge. Knowledge both lost to time and yet to be discovered. It gave birth to the Enlightenment and the age of reason and the age of humanism. Embracing truth, knowledge, and an understanding and compassion for humanity and our shared history opens up the world to each of us individually and collectively, enhancing our stewardship of the earth and our relationships with one another. Living the Renaissance spirit means engaging with history not as a distant past, but as a living dialogue, constantly informing and enriching our present. And the Renaissance spirit is a reminder of our dialogue with the future, our progeny and posterity, our legacy. Will we grant them a future free from fear of climate change and tales of the end of democracy? Will they admonish us for our sins and omissions? Or will they remember us fondly as saviors of humanity and the natural world? Please take the quiz next to see if you're a Renaissance spirit. The Renaissance spirit, more than just a philosophy or style, but a style for living, learning, growing, and thinking. If you're looking to explore and experience life in the steps of the true masters of the Renaissance and free thinkers throughout our past, present, and future, vive Renaissance spirit. History has not died, only our understanding of it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below and please subscribe, like, and share, and stay tuned for another episode of Uncoded coming soon.